So let's start adding interactions to the slider controls. Slider controls will be used to move the slider to the next or previous slides. We already have the slider controls layout in place. As you can see, this has two PGIA control links that will be used for moving our slider. So let's add interactions to the first control link. Go to the tree panel and select the PGIA control link with the class name Prev. Go to the interactions panel and click on activate interactions if it is not enabled. Now go to the Actions list and click on Interactions. Interaction settings should appear. For Name, enter Scroll To. For Trigger, select Click On. Leave the target blank. Click on Edit Animation and the Timeline Editor should appear. Go to the Timeline Editor. For Selector, click on Edit Selector. On the pop-up field, enter upcaret.pgia-slider, pipe.pgia-slides-container. This is a very useful selector. The first part of the selector has a caret, which goes up the tree to target the closest matching parent, which in this case is PGIA slider. And the pipe character is used to look for the PGIA slides container within that element. Now press OK. Click on the blank space of the timeline editor to create a new transition and a transition setting should appear. For type, keep it as tween. For position, enter zero. For duration, keep 0 0.5. Now click on add property, go to scroll, select Scroll 2. For Scroll 2, we can set any of the options available here, but for this button, we should select Prev underscore page. Lastly, click on Advanced Options and enable Prevent Default Action. This is usually done when we don't need the link to go to anywhere. Our link has a hash as the ref value, so if we don't apply a Prevent Default, it will scroll to the top of the page. Save and refresh the page, and we can test the button now. But as we are already on the first slide, let's manually scroll the slider. You can just click on the empty space of the scroll bar. If you're on a laptop with a touchpad, you might easily do a horizontal scroll with a swipe of the touchpad. Now the slider is on the last slide, let's test the interaction. Press the Alt key on the keyboard and click the control link on the left, and it should take you to the previous slide. In this same way, we could set next for our scroll to value on the second control link. But let's use a trick instead so that we can work with just this one interaction and apply the same interaction to all PGIA controls. Go to the timeline editor and click on the transition bar to edit the transition settings. For scroll to value, enter dollar sign, curly bracket, target dot data dash scroll dash to curly bracket. Now let's add apply to many interactions to integrate the same interaction to all the other PGIA control. Go to the actions list and click on apply to many. Go to the apply to many settings. On target, select edit selector. On the pop-up field, enter dollar sign dot PGIA dash control and press OK. Now save and refresh the page. Click on each slider control to check their functionality. Don't forget to press the Alt key on your keyboard if you have page clicks turned off. You should be able to see that Next PGIA Control and Prev PGIA Control should work as intended. Instead of creating different interactions, one for each button, we created just one interaction and assigned Scroll Transform to read the scroll destination from the data-scroll-2 attribute of the link target element. This is done with the statement dollar sign curly bracket target dot data dash scroll dash to curly bracket. Target in this case refers to the target element of the interaction 
and data scroll two is the attribute name. With this setup, we just need to set the data scroll two attribute on each link. We can do that in the attributes editor in the properties panel, or use the edit element code editor and do it in the code. Note that after editing the code of the elements with interactions, we have to refresh the page view to refresh interactions on these elements.